Hi guys, welcome back. This is Dave with Wyoming Old Iron, and uh, we're continuing our series on the microwaves today. And as I promised in my last video, we're going to discuss the microwave that's dead. It's plugged in, but there's no power, no lights, no nothing. This is probably the most common thing you will find in any microwave today. So somewhere the power has been interrupted. So obviously the first thing to do is check and make sure you have power to the microwave before you get to the point where you've torn it all apart and you have it sitting like this. You can do that if it's, if it's a plugged in microwave, which most of them are, you can simply unplug the uh, microwave, plug in a toaster or a coffee pot or a hairdryer or whatever, just see if it runs. If it runs, you know you've got power at that outlet, and that's not your problem. So today we're going to cover the reasons a microwave will be dead. So in the last video, I covered the fuse. You see the fuse there. Um, and it probably is the most common reason for a microwave to be dead. Um, we've also covered the door switches and where the door switches can cause a fuse to blow. But for now, all we're interested in doing is determining what, what is causing the microwave to be dead. What's causing it not to do anything? So if you notice here, let's see if I can get this. You'll see that our power cord comes in through this black encased cable. You see the the black wire and the white wire. That's your 120 volts in. So what you're gonna do is take your meter, and it's very, very tough to do this, but okay. So you're gonna check for 120 volts across these two connections. You see we have 122 volts, that's good. So we have power. Your power cord is not your problem. So if you wanted to check the fuse this way, if you own it, you have to go then go and unplug it. However, you can check the fuse on voltage. Let me show you how. Okay. Check across the fuse with your voltmeter. See how you have zero volts? Okay, because you have an electrical path through there, it's gonna read zero volts. Now let's read it from one side to ground and it's I'm gonna try to get this set up so you can see it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna read from one side of the fuse there's a ground screw over here you'll just have to take my word for it and you'll see we have 122 volts I'm sorry I can't do all this at once but then you can go to the other side of the fuse there's also 122 volts. And without getting really deep in the th weeds with electrical theory, because there's an electrical path through a switch, and a fuse is a type of switch, you get zero volts. If that fuse had been blown, you would have gotten 120 volts across it on a volt setting. Now, again, we're not on ohms, we're on volts. So you've checked your fuse. Your fuse is good. You still have a dead microwave. What could possibly be wrong next? So we're gonna, gonna come up here. It may take me a minute to set up the camera. We're gonna come up here and you're gonna see two items. Okay, you see that little square thing back there? That is a thermal fuse. And what that's designed to prevent is, let's say you run this microwave empty, or you put in a potato instead of programming it for five minutes, you program it for 50 minutes. That's, that's designed to prevent a fire. If it gets so hot, the microwave will shut down. It's called a thermal fuse. And these are used in clothes dryers, uh, 
Still trying to get it positioned so you can see it. Let's see if we do it this way. Um, clothes dryers, ranges, and a whole host of other home appliances. Okay, we get that. Okay, we've got it on the screen. Okay. So, we can check a thermal fuse just like we did a, a regular fuse. And I'm glad I can get this on. So we can come in here, if you stick your lead in here and get a connection. Now let's, so we don't know if we've got a good connection right now or not. So let's come over here to our ground screw, which is off camera. So you got 120 volts. That tells you that your meter lead is in there. Now again, you can check these things with ohms too if the unit's unplugged. I'm checking it with volts. Check across there, zero volts. Again, this is a switch. Zero volts through it, you're good. That thermal fuse is good. That's called your cavity thermal fuse. And again, at some point in this, in the, all this testing, you're going to find all these problems. So now we're going to reset the camera again and the meter. Okay, and you're going to see another one of these little square fuses. Now, most of these, by the way, are round in the in the world of microwaves, but these are square, so we're working with what we got. This is called the magnetron thermal fuse. And what this is designed to do is protect the magnetron from overheating. But you can check it the same way you just checked your other thermal fuse and your fuse. So we're going to go across it. Zero volts. It means there's an electrical path through it. We can check from one side to ground. We have 120. The other side to ground. We have 120. Okay, so that fuse is good. Now again, when you're checking this stuff, eventually you're gonna find a failed item. So next, you still got a dead one. Let's assume everything's still dead in a door now. So you could at this point you could add a bad fuse. You could add a bad fuse board, which would have been you wouldn't have power anywhere else but to into the board. I've never seen it happen, doesn't mean it can't. You've checked both of your thermal fuses. Some microwaves have three. They're all good. So now what do you do? So you come down, and it's gonna take me a minute to rearrange here. We're gonna check power into our circuit board. In this case, circuit boards, plural. So, on this model, you look back in there, oh, looky there, another fuse. So, that could be your problem. You've got another board here, which is your power out board. Okay, so you're going to check for 120 down to this. Now this is going to be, uh, there's no way I'm going to be able to get my meter down here for you to be able to see it. The first thing we're going to go do is check that fuse back there. There we go. We have zero volts. I know, you have to take my word for it. That fuse is good. I've already checked three fuses. I'm not going to do the fourth one. So now, your 240 should be on these two relays over here. And I haven't looked to see whether it's the front or back wires that are your incoming. Although it should be the two back ones, since they're the insulated wires. Okay, folks, so sorry it took me a while to get the camera set up so you could see. 
So we're going to come in across here. Okay, no power. So the power should come in. There's 120, so it's the two uninsulated terminals on this model. So now you have 120 into this relay board. So now we need to go back to our fuse back here, since it's the secondary board. Let's see if I can get it in the screen. Right there it is. So at this point, we know the problem is going to be one of these two boards. And yeah, wearing one on my chest doesn't work, folks, because a lot of times I have to contortion in here. So we're going to check from one side of this to ground. We have 120. We'll check from the other side to ground. My meter just timed out. If it's on for so long, it shuts down. I'm going to check there to ground. We got 120. So, what this would tell me is, if we had a dead microwave, and we've done all these tests, that backboard is bad. 